All right, folks, today we're going mud crabbing and I'm going to show you our range of Wilson crab pots. It's big here in northern New South Wales, Queensland, Northern Territory. Everyone loves their crabs. Many different traps we use. We're going to show you the different styles that we sell at Wilson's and have available and also how to use them and a few tips to catch the elusive mud crab. All right, first trap is the rectangle trap. You'll see I've got one here. Basically, it's the cheapest trap that we sell. It's a budget model. It's made for shallow water. It's quite light but it's still sturdy and do the job and it'll hold a nice sized mud crab and won't bend up. All right, now due to the physical size of actual crab pots, all of the good ones these days collapse. It makes it easy, we can put many in the boat. In Queensland, we're allowed four per person, it does vary per state, but the idea is that they fold down and you can put, if you've got three guys in the boat, you can easily put 12 crab pots in. If they were erected, there's no way in a small boat you'd be fitting 12 crab pots. So here's one here in its collapsed state. You'll see here, we've got the four posts inside. Now, so our traps are a little bit different to some of the others on the market. They hook their posts onto the ring. These particular traps are our heavy duty or professional traps. This is the uh, sort of medium quality one. It's got the heavy ring, hot dip gal, so it doesn't rust. Stays a long time, but it's got the lighter mesh on it. Very good for sand crabs, very good for mud crabs also. A big pot, 900 mil round, so it fits plenty of crabs in and they're not shy to get in it. But I think the greatest benefit is these posts. The reason why I reckon they're so good is that the other ones connect onto the ring, they fold out, they fold in, they get in the way sometimes, but these ones, you can just take them all out of your pot and sit them in a bucket like so. Now you see mine, they're well worn, you can tell I love my mud crabbing. So I put them all in there, they're convenient, they put away, and I'll show you the next tip and the trick about that later on once we throw the pots in. Troy's put one of these pots up or erected it, ready to get it set to put in the water. Now you'll notice, there it is there, nice and tight. You'll see how the funnels are strung tight. The difference between a good and a bad pot is, a good pot has everything made of quality and it encourages the crab to get into the pot. Now you'll notice some other brands of pots, they've got very short funnels, like only this wide. The crab's really got to be an athletic crab to get in. You'll notice our pots, nice big funnel, nice even walkway. The crab gets up there, he doesn't have to try to get in, he just goes up and all of a sudden he's in and caught in our pot. You'll also see it's very tight and quite close together enough that that crab's got to squeeze that open a little bit to get in and that's a good thing because it means he can't get back out and that's what we want. We want to throw our pots in the water, we go to the effort to do it, we want to know that that crab is going to be in there when we go to lift the pot out of the water. And I guarantee later we'll see some good crabs caught in this style pot. Now also you'll notice another benefit is the chafing rope. Well, it's a chafe rope, chafing rope, there's a few different names for it, but the basic thing of it is it stops the net rubbing on the wire and actually breaking and wearing through, it protects the net that's on the bottom side. Now this has only got one chafing rope, some have two, but that means we'd throw that pot with that side down onto the bottom so that doesn't wear through if we've got a rough, rocky or scaly, shaly bottom. And also it stops it rubbing in the boat when it's sitting still. So a very good addition to this pot and well worth spending the extra money to have a pot that has this because it'll last a, a fair bit longer. Next item, and I think this one's a ripper, is the Easy Crab Bait Up Bag. So basically that there, your pots come with a clip or a small bag, but look, us serious crabbers like to look a fair, you know, put a fair bit of bait in the pot. There's the mullet there. We'll see that, it's on a rope with hooks. You'll see that that bag extends and has an opening, so we can either put a whole mullet in there or a whole heap of little bits and pieces, and if a fish head happens to be a bigger, fatter fish head, it squashes up like that and can fit it in. Very useful, very versatile. You can have all your baits done and ready to go. Makes putting the pots out easy and a dream. This is a great little thing, inexpensive, and yet again, readily available. For someone that doesn't want to go to the expense of that bait bag, we've got a cheaper item. It is the stainless steel bait clip, very simple. This one opens up, you thread your bait onto it, push it through one of the wires in the pot or one of the meshes in the pot and do it back up. That easy, sure catch, pre-packaged bait clip, stainless steel. All right, more crabbing accessories. What we sell at Wilson's is a, a poly float. This is a six inch poly float. Most of the regulations state that you have to use a six inch, a minimum of six inch float so that it's visible to boats and other things so it doesn't become a hazard on the water. You'll see that this one's written on. It's actually got my son's name on it. He loves crabbing too, but it's a, it's a, uh, a sort of a medium density foam. So it'll withstand the rigors of getting beaten up around the boat. You'll find some of the other ones on the market are fairly light and will break up. These ones are quite strong, but still very price conscious and uh, yeah, they're a necessity to have on all crab pots and they must be clearly marked in Queensland with your name and your address. 
All right, so let's have a look at the fundamentals of this crab pot. All right, as I said, this is our, uh, our medium quality one, heavy duty ring, the lighter mesh. All right, it's got a top opening on it. So we see that there, it's simply a hook on a little bit of rope that's coiled around that joins it and it just purely goes over the side ring like that. So to undo it and put our bait in, we open that up and spread the hole in the, in the mesh. And we've got our easy bait up bag we had from before. Now these things are great for these sort of pots, makes it very simple. You watch this, we just simply lay it in the middle. Now we ensure that that bait goes in the middle because as we spoke about earlier, we want the crab, we want to encourage that crab to hop into the pot and not try and eat the bait from the outside. And we simply put one loop through and hook it under like that. And then we take the other side, it's got the other hook on it, and we take it around and we pull that tight across the middle of the crab pot and hook it in like that. And then we take our last effort is, we pull that one top rope tight so that hole closes up. Now you see it's a little bit open there. The idea is that you get it around the ring and then you move it around till it's tight. Pulls back on itself and tightens all that up. And here we have, we attach the rope to it and we've got one pot ready to go. All right, so people mainly think mud crabs live up in the mangroves and in the little drains. That is true, but in big rivers like the one we're crabbing here, they actually live in some different places. Now you'll see, we're gonna drop this pot on a bit of a drop off in nine meters of water. Now that seems a lot for mud crabs, but sometimes, especially in big suburban areas, it pays to think outside the square. And remember, the crabs don't only live up against rock walls or in mangroves, they also live on the edge of channels and you'll see that drop off on the sander, we're right on the edge of the channel here. So what we're gonna do is pick a nice little slope at the bottom of it and we're just gonna pitch that pot in there and I, I reckon we'll go well when we check this tomorrow. Okay, so we throw the pot over, make sure the shaping rope's on the bottom side, remember we said that, and the bait's on the bottom side of the pot. There we go, and we also make sure that the float and the rope clear the boat so it doesn't get caught in the motor. Alright folks, well, it's the next morning, we've had our pots in overnight since you saw us set them all up. Beautiful morning for it. We, uh, we're gonna come up on our first pot here. It's just out the mouth of a little soak in the shallow water. This is one of our rectangle pots. You can see Dicko's got his glove on there so the old rope doesn't hurt him and the crabs don't spike him. He stole it from Michael Jackson. Let's go see if we caught any crabs. All right, folks, we've had our pots in overnight. As you can see, it's a lovely morning. We're coming up to our first one. And let's hope it's got some crabs in it. We actually dropped this in a little um, shallow soak yesterday. Like there's like a little drain that goes up into the um, up into the trees. We're just coming up onto it now, and uh, we'll uh, pick it up and see what we've got. Oh, here we go. We've got a few crabs in here. Oh, look at that. That's a pot full. <laughs> look at that. And like, like people say that these rectangle traps, like we've had, you know, they say that they get out of them. That's a perfect example. We've had this this pot in here overnight. Look how many crabs are in it. They don't get out. And this is our um, deluxe heavy duty pot. Oh yes, here we go. What do we got in here? You got any legal ones? Oh yeah, there's one legal buck. Or well, close to We measure him anyway. I reckon he'd be good on. You do have to be careful trying to get them out of the pot. You really, if you're not experienced, you should dump them in a bin first. And Troy will show you how to do that now. Hopefully. Hopefully, you can get the buck out and then shake the rest out like that. That didn't work. It couldn't work any better, could it? Yeah, you did pretty well there, Troy. I'd like to see you do it again. Yeah, well, hopefully we get a few more crabs in the other pots. Hopefully, hopefully, you can get the buck out and then shake the rest out like that. That didn't work. Couldn't work any better, could it? Yeah, you did pretty well there, Troy. I'd like to see you do it again. Yeah, well, hopefully we get a few more crabs in the other pots. And we will show you. Now, we're pulling these pots out of the water now. So, a quick demonstration on how to disassemble them. You know, we've got a bit of a routine. We've got a washing basket. We put all our floats in and whatnot. So, we get usually get one bloke to, um, to grab the float and then the other fella Put the crab down here, and you put it up. We got a, a deck on the a front deck on this boat, so 
make sure you tie your, your trap back up because otherwise it gets hooked in with everything else. And then it's just a simple case of pulling the arms out and we've got a we've got a bucket. And this is the advantage of having these sort of stays. You know, you just throw them all in a bucket like this. And then that pot's ready to go. It just sits nice and flat. You can fit like, what have we got? 12? Yeah, you know, we'll allow 12 or three yeah, people in the boat. So, you know, you can easily put 12 pots in a boat like this. Anyway, let's go and check out our next pot. All right. Folks, it is, it is very important to make sure that you do measure every crab because it is quite deceiving. This one's well and truly legal. We'll pull this crab pot in. What have we got in this one? What have we got here? Oh, oh. yes, I love crabbing. Have a look at that. Two nice bucks. He's a very nice one. And another one here, he's missing a claw. You often see that because they fight a fair bit. Mud crabs are quite territorial. One claws for fighting, generally the big one. Well, Troy, well worth pulling that pot in. I'd say it finishes a nice little morning of uh, inner city crabbing. I'll just show you the difference between a male and a female crab. As you can see, this one here is a female crab. It's a, it's a more rounded, um, rounded flap, and the male has a more pointed, pointed flap. Um, generally, the females, which is this one here, usually have smaller claws, and the and the male crabs have a, a quite a, a large, a large claw. So yeah, that's that's the difference between a, a male and a female crab. And you always let the females go. But that's in Queensland, isn't it, Troy? Some other states you're allowed to actually keep them, so it pays to check your local regulations. Yeah, well, it's, we're, in, we're in Queensland at the moment, so we always let female crabs go. <laughs> Here we go. This is the uh, alternate method of tying a crab up, and one that you can do by yourself. Now, you need a longer piece of string than you ordinarily would have for the other method. Well, you can see I've joined two there, but that doesn't matter. We come down the front of the shell, around the front of the claws. We pull those claws in. You'll see I just hook that in around the flipper. And I cross those two bits of string over behind my foot like that. And then I come back around, so they're crossed over on the back side of that flipper, and I come back around the front then to tie them up between the front of the flipper and the edge of the shell. See that there? All right. So, and believe it or not, it's easier to do in bare feet, this. So there's my knot. I come around my toes. I pull that tight. And now the back of my, the bottom of the ball of my foot's holding that first knot tight. I come around again the front of my foot, second knot in, and there we have it. A tied crab done by myself double knotted might pay to put a third knot in especially if you're using sort of a PE rope like we are here some of your other string will actually work with two knots but you're better off putting three because it can come loose and there he is there a fully restrained crab that uh, won't do too much damage in your boat or to your feet or other people and yes beware the loose mud crab running around all right, so here's the morning catch. Four nice mud crabs. Not bad for a inner city crabbing, if you want to call it that. Look, mud crabbing's great fun. You can do it with the whole family. The kids love it too. We drop these pots off after work. We've picked them up before work, and it's mud crabs for lunch. Look, give crabbing a go, and check out the Wilson crab pots at your local Wilson dealer.